All right, folks, it's 1230 Central. Uh, greetings and welcome, friends. I'm your host, Bill Murphy, and welcome back to Tech Talks. I'm excited. This is our December 2021 webinar. It's fun to resume this series. It's had several months off uh, due to construction season and everybody was busy, but I'm really excited to introduce our guest. But first, I'll introduce our company for those of you that might be new to us. Uh, you can see on the Title slide here, ASP Enterprises, Quick Supply Company, Bowman Construction Supply, and Cascade Geosynthetics. I am Bill Murphy. I'm your civil engineer, and I'm sitting in the ASP Enterprises office in St. Louis today. Go ahead there if you want to click the next one. And you know about us, we finally updated this slide. I've been talking about doing it for years. It used to say 30 years and 9,000 customers. We have beyond 12,000 customers now, and we have over 45 years experience. With, uh, most of our companies and employees have been around for a very long time. We are still family owned. We're still a small business. We cover a large area. I am the one in civil engineer for the company. We do have five CPES, but we've got a lot of people who are experts in their field. Let's try the next slide. And this is just a map to show the states our offices are located in, but we have friends beyond these states and we can help people in any area of the country. And I'm proud to say we're good friends with a lot of people that do what we do. We are construction supply specialists and we are your trusted site solution spe specialists. We have a new product committee that vets all of our new products and we are constantly seeking to evolve and improve our offerings. Let's do the next slide. Uh, you know us from erosion control, sediment control, we do stormwater, geosynthetics. Some of our locations have hardscapes with some outdoor displays. I think if we hit the next slide, we might see one of those. This is actually our warehousing and we see a little display down on the bottom left. That's our quick supply location. We are experts in logistics. So we can bring in truck loads and container loads of products Break that down into exactly what you need for your project and deliver it when and where you need it. As we're, we're your teammates in this deal. So as your trusted site solution specialist, one of the things we continue to do is in, in, in educate ourselves to improve ourselves, but also share knowledge in a fun, informative way with you. So we're going to do that here today. Next slide. And we just want you to know when you see our trucks out on the road, give them a wave. Uh, our people are very busy, very productive, and we make the most uh, with what we have. Now, some people are hearing some challenges in the shipping world. We're blessed that we have plenty of products and we deal with a lot of wonderful manufacturers. And one of them is here with me today. And I'm gonna introduce to you, Ben Campbell. Ben is an engineer with Propex Geo Solutions. And I don't have his bio in front of me because I got the real thing right here. Here I am. This is the first time we've ever done a live webinar with two people in the room at the same time same time. So I'll be available to help Pastor Ben and ask him questions as we go. And at the end, we'll do a Q&A together. So take it away, Ben. Well, thank you very much, Bill. So my name is Ben Campbell. As Bill mentioned, I'm with Propex Geo Solutions. I've been with the company for about five years now. I work in their engineering department there doing various uh, project tasks and giving presentations like this. Before I joined Propex, I worked in the industry as a consultant for 15 years where I designed a variety of stormwater drainage utility projects across uh, the country. I'm gonna yeah. interject. I saw somebody raise their hand. We're gonna ask you to use the Q&A. If you use the Q&A feature on Zoom, you'll be able to send us, type out your question so we can capture that, answer it during the presentation or at the end. And one of the things we're gonna do when we're done is we're gonna capture all asked questions during the Q&A and from the subsequent survey you'll get from Madeline Dreary, our marketing specialist. And we will send out to every attendee written questions and written answers. You'll get that along with your PDH certificate. Excellent. Thanks. Moving along now. So who is Propex and what does Propex do? Propex has been around since the early 1960s under various namesakes. Of course, as the industry goes, you know, names change over time, but we're not just a company that popped up recently because the construction industry is doing relatively well. Uh, you know, we started out making just traditional geotextiles, our non-woven geotextiles, woven geotextiles. We have a grid line, some other pavement interlayers. But I'm going to talk to you mostly today about these products you see here on the left, these turf reinforcement mats and these high performance turf reinforcement mats. Now, what does all that mean? That's a big fancy word. My neighbors ask me to explain to them what I do. And I give them those terms. They, they tell me to stop trying to sound intelligent. I'm not that smart. So I agree with them. Uh, but anyway, you know, many cases, folks have used these materials in the past to solve erosion issues. I'm going to talk to you about how they can be used to solve bank stabilization issues. So on the subject of bank stabilization, Bill, what do you know about bank stabilization? Well, where I grew up on a gravel road, we often use old cars. Old cars, yes, old cars is a good, takes. that's a good solution. Yeah, there. You yeah, see, yeah. I've seen it myself too. This is in my own eyes in the mountains of Western North Carolina. You <laughs> that's know? right, that's right. Yeah. Well, it's not just old tires. Sometimes, or old, old cars, it could be appliances, tires. Tires, appliances, all that good stuff. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, you know, um, thank goodness we found a better way to recycle. 
Okay, I think we're alive. Yes, yes, all right, yes. All right. That's okay. awesome. Yeah, no, yeah, no big deal. Adapt and overcome. <laughs> we're going to have some adversity once in a while in life, you know? Hopefully that's the last adversity we get today. Yes, hopefully it is, you know? <laughs> Goodness gracious. So what were we talking about? We were talking about concrete, man. Yeah, you just stopped it rocking. I concrete. thought you forgot what concrete was made of. Yeah, concrete's <laughs> great stuff. It locked you up. You know, it's a lot better than this electronic stuff we got going on. All right, so <laughs> rock and roll. Concrete's what they make bomb shelters out of, you know? You never Correct. have to worry about it as an engineer. There you but go. But hey, gosh, look at this, man. Darn, darnest thing. Concrete isn't all it's cracked up to be. That's a, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I forgot terrible, my rim terrible. shot. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> So we talk. There's rock out there. There's cars out there. What What are we here to talk about? What is Propex's solution? Well, Propex's solution is to reinforce the vegetation with these TRMs, these high performance TRMs. And what's uh, TRM stand for? A turf reinforcement mat. Yes, it reinforces the turf. So it's kind of like rebar to concrete. Even though we just talked about, about concrete, yep. uh, it's kind of like rebar to concrete. It gives the vegetation something to hold on to. You know, because in order to keep banks stabilized and erosion under control, you need to have uh, vegetation with a root system in place, holding those soil particles in place. And they can get uh, torn off with, with, by debris loads or mowing loads or um, you know, hydraulic loads. And I've, had, I've heard people argue whether or not the TRM reinforces the roots or the stem. Would yes, that's a, that's a big debate. That's a big yeah. debate. You know, in most of our applications, we recommend root reinforcement. Yeah. Uh, the, in traditional, some... If a contractor just goes out there and throws material on the ground and walks away, it's yeah. going to end up being stem reinforcement. It's not that not the best. And you could lose a stem in a storm or a flood, but if the stem mm -hmm. goes away and you reinforce the roots, those roots will reestablish. Right? You're exactly right. You're exactly right. And I got some slides that kind of show that. I didn't mean to steal your thunder. No, you're not. <laughs> um, all right. So what's going on here? Look at this embankment here. This is anywhere USA. We got a road here. We got a slope, and all of a sudden it started to slip. Why did it start to slip? Well, it got super saturated, saturated beyond its wildest imagination. Because you see here, it was there for a very long time. It had a good healthy stand of uh, grass on there. One day it decided to slip. So why did it decide to slip? Uh, it, it, the extra moisture made it lose its cohesion. You know, soil is very particular about its moisture content. You know, one end of the spectrum, 0% moisture is dust and 100% moisture is mud. Neither of those are very strong. So... Bill's wondering. I'm like, wondering. Like, what does a mat sitting on the surface have to do with any kind of like moisture issues down below the surface? We get right? asked that a lot. Yes. Yeah. How does that work? You know, it's <laughs> magic. No, it's not magic. It's engineering. Uh, well, we combine them with our anchors, these engineered earth anchors that drive through the mat itself into the soil, deep into the soil, you know, anywhere from three to 12 feet deep um, to provide an artificial root system. And then in between the anchors is the natural root system of the vegetation. There's three main components of an anchor. This is an anchor. It's actually a sideways picture of an anchor. The anchor usually goes the other way into the ground. So maybe we need to correct this. I've always thought that. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Anyway, you know, it's got an anchor head that goes in the ground and it's kind of complicated. Oh, there it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then there's a, a cable that sits, uh, that joins the anchor head to the top plate that sits on the surface. And this top plate has a one-way gripping device. So it can only be pulled out in one direction. It won't go back in. Kind of like post-tension concrete, mm -hmm. you know? Variety of sizes of anchors and depths of anchors. Um, of course, we all the larger we get, the more expensive it gets. We want to make sure that we're providing good value to the customer and our client, and making sure we don't over-engineer it at the same time. You'll work with us to provide that recommendation. Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah. Propex. We have a, a full staff of engineers in house that work with engineers and owners every day to help them determine what the anchor size needs to be, how deep it needs to go in the ground. And uh, with the spacing, you know, sometimes it, we bring the spacing in real tight or we spread it out, depending upon what the existing soil conditions are. Uh, we got a little quick video here. I hope it works well. If, if anyone doesn't see it or it's jumpy, just raise your hand, let us know. Oh, Q&A. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll monitor that. ArmorMax is the most advanced flexible armoring technology available for severe erosion and slope stability challenges. The engineered earth armoring system combines Pyramid 75, a high-performance turf reinforcement mat, with engineered earth anchors to lock soil in place and protect against hydraulic stresses. This video will review the anchor installation process. Each anchor consists of an anchor head, flexible cable tendon, and a load-bearing plate with locking mechanism. Anchors are delivered fully assembled and ready for installation. 
Propex offers three different types of anchors, each made from corrosion-resistant materials to provide mechanical strength and durability. For optimal performance with the greatest risk reduction, it's important to consult with Propex on anchor selection and installation pattern design. Anchor installation is completed in conjunction with ArmorMax Laydown. A detailed guide to the ArmorMax Laydown process is available in the ArmorMax installation instructions. Prior to installation, ensure you have the following tools. Percussion hammer, drive steel, jack jaw anchor setting tool, and cable cutters. Select the drive steel that is the size and length needed to drive the anchor to the specified embedment depth. Insert the tapered end into the anchor head and position the anchor head with inserted drive steel tip above the HPTRM at the drive location. Using a percussion hammer, drive the anchor through the pyramid into the ground perpendicular to the slope surface. Continue driving until the desired embedment depth is reached. Remove the drive steel from the ground. Depending on soil conditions, this may require the use of a jack jaw or other leverage device. Slide the load-bearing plate down the cable tendon towards the pyramid using your hands. Once the plate makes contact with the pyramid, place the jack jaw setting tool on top of the anchor plate and place the top of the anchor tendon into the grips, keeping the anchor tendon taut. Press down on the jack jaw lever towards the slope surface, pulling the anchor cable out of the ground. During this step, the anchor head will rotate perpendicularly in the ground, a process known as anchor setting. Depending on the soil type and condition, this step may need to be repeated more than once. When the anchor is set, there will be a noticeable change in the amount of force needed to displace the anchor tendon further. This is a good indication that the anchor head is now rotated and the anchor is ready to be load locked. Typical anchor embedment depth can range from 3 to 12 feet, based on soil conditions. To load lock an anchor, continue to apply tension to the anchor tendon using the jack jaw setting tool. Once the anchor has been load locked, use cable cutters to remove the excess anchor cable so that it is flush to the load bearing plane. For more information on installing the ArmorMax system, Reference the installation guidelines and details available at propexglobal.com or contact Propex's engineering services team at 423-553-2465. All right, folks, so that's the video. Um, you know, so there's all these different types of products out there. They come on these rolls. They come rolled up straw blankets, coconut blankets. There's TRMs. There's high performance TRMs. You know, the question is, is you know, how do you know which one's the right one for your job? I mean, does everyone have to become an expert and trained and certified and have they have to know an expert CEUs and all that? No, that's yeah, yeah, exactly. That's right. And you know, experts. Now you know, there's two of us right here, yeah. and we got more back where we came from. So. Um, we have our experts in house. You contact us, let us become an extension of your resources. Um, we can run slope stability analyses. We have channel flow analysis programs that actually, you know, we all have those, right? But the unique thing about ours, and you can access it on our website, is it allows you to put it, parameters in there, input parameters, and it'll output what the actual recommended product would be for your job. We have CAD files that we customize all the time. We are happy to send those to you in DWG format. You can drop those into your detail sheets. You can modify them however you wish. We also have uh, CSI formatted specifications where you know, they can fit right into your spec manual if you're working on a public project and you need to have that. We have um, details and specifications that are branded. We also have them generic as well. There's other products out there on the market that uh, provide us competition and we compete with them on price. But um, we separate ourselves by providing additional support. We have folks that go out in the field and provide to, uh, installation assistance to contractors where, you know, they will uh, become an extension of the quality control effort for the job. They'll make sure the contractor knows how to properly install the materials and how to most efficiently install the materials to ensure the production is being met. Um, you might ask, what, what do we charge for this? Well, I, that's why I asked our yeah, salesman, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you charge for the engineering yeah, services? Yeah, Same thing I charge. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely nothing. We zero dollars. <laughs> under zero obligation to use us, as well, to use the product as well in your project. We, we're we approached many times by engineers who are considering a variety of options for their project, and they're wanting to find out, you know, uh, is, does Propex have any options? And we will go there and we'll analyze it. We'll provide them a, a detailed submittal along with a uh, 
engineer's opinion on probable cost for that product. And you can have that information compared to the other products. And in the end, if another product is selected, um, what we've gained from it is a dialogue and an understanding um, from somebody else of what we can do and what we can help with. So you're a professional engineer and you offer yeah. engineering services for free? Uh, I love it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I love free stuff. Yes, yes. Who doesn't like free stuff? Yeah. Okay, good deal. So um, going to a couple case studies here. This is a overpass or an underpass, whichever way you want to look at it here. Uh, what's happening here, Bill? What, what well, uh, is it gophers like Caddyshack? Yeah, yeah, they're digging a big old <laughs> hole. This is like that uh, movie Dune where the soil's coming yeah, out. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's getting ready to slough off. And, you know, it could slough off. If this uh, slope stability issue continues, it could end up putting a bunch of soil down here in the roadway. It could start to uh, clog or partially clog the inlet down here. And so if it floods, it could put standing water in the travel lane and that becomes a hazard to the public health. And that's something that us engineers are not supposed to do. Right. And once it's gotten to this point, it's not a matter of if it'll continue to fail, it will definitely continue to fail. And when will that happen? Mm -hmm. Probably the next big rain event. Yeah. 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 Something needed to be done. So they contacted us and we came up with an option to use our Armor Max product, which is our, our mats with our anchors to um, shore up this slope. And what they did is they stripped off that slope material. They came back and compacted it down just like they did originally in the construction. But instead of uh, leaving it there this time, they put our mat, our anchors down there. And this is just some uh, shots of what that looks like. Uh, we also have in between our anchors, these pins, these temporary pins that hold the material down. So it's not gonna look like that later, is it? No, no, actually this is what it looks like afterwards. So they actually come in here and place sod right on top of the material and let it go. You know? get immediate coverage yeah. and let the roots grow down through? Down through the top, right? So get root reinforcement, which is, you know, by definition, these products are, turf reinforcement mats. Yeah. And so it, to function properly, you got to have that turf element. There's several ways to get it. I'll explain another, a couple options here in the future, but sod is a great one, especially if you're in an area that sod's plentiful and sod's, you know, less costly than bringing in a bunch of topsoil and seed or hydro seed. And someone's just going to take the responsibility to water that, make sure it gets established. That is very true. That's very true. You see, there's like a temporary irrigation line yeah. running across here. That's, that's always a key thing to make sure that the spec and the detail calls out that the contractor has an obligation to maintain the watering, to get it, you know, for whatever period of time, depending upon the time of year, or the region that the project is located to make sure that that does get established before it dies. Exactly. Um, okay. So this, we move on to levees. Uh, there's a lot of uh, issues these days with levees and flood protection and all that. You know, it seems like we have a 500-year storm about every other yeah, week, yeah, every other week, yeah, yeah. somewhere. Um, and the storms are just climate changes here. You know, we fight it or believe it. But anyway, um, so back to what levees do. You know, levees, levees provide flood protection. And what Jill, Bill mentioned earlier um, in the presentation was that, you know, when you get a debris load coming down, it can have the tendency to strip the vegetation away. And like in this picture on the left here, this debris load, it stripped the vegetation away, but it didn't pull the HPTRM away. Uh, what the HPTRM did was it kept its soil base layer beneath it so that um, less than a year later here, the vegetation was able to reestablish itself. And you can use this uh, tree here as a reference uh, for where that's this awesome. was located. So that's a, a really, really cool advantage to Armor Max and our HPTRM. Uh, to talk more about levees, uh, we all know what happened in 2005 with Hurricane Katrina and, and all the trouble that uh, New Orleans experienced there with those floods and loss of life and all that. And uh, The Army Corps of Engineers underwent some ex extensive research to determine what they were going to do to reinforce these levees. Here's a video I'm going to show you again here that has a real independent perspective as to uh, what they did and how they tested these materials and how they came about using these uh, across hundreds of miles of levees mm -hmm. um, in various districts of uh, Jacksonville, New Orleans, Omaha, and, and, and others as well. So here we go. Of the more than four dozen major levee breaches caused by Hurricane Katrina, most were the result of overtopping and erosion due to waves and water friction. Congress gave the Army Corps of Engineers billions of dollars to do repairs and upgrades. Some levees and flood walls are now higher and wider. Some, like the London Avenue Canal in Gentilly, now have a splash pad and added concrete paving where the earthen levee meets the man-made protection. One of the lessons that we learned from Hurricane Katrina was that that creates a weak point in the system so that we can have 
erosion that occurs right at that interface between the levee and the, and the hardened structure. By June of 2011, Louisiana should have protection from the so-called 100-year storm. Now the focus turns to how to keep the levees from washing away in an even bigger one. We know that there can be storms that could exceed the design criteria, that, that elevation requirement that we have. And so we could get wave overtopping or we could have water that's spilling over the crowns of the levees during a storm. And so we don't want the system to erode if that occurs. It was the Army Corps' job to figure out a way to mimic that scenario, to put possible armoring solutions to the test. So the Corps turned to a world-renowned water researcher here at Colorado State University to design and build a facility like no other in the United States. They knew what they needed to know, meaning here's the, here's the storm conditions. We, we need to be able to test our levees against those storm conditions. With a $1.7 million grant, Chris Thornton, director of the university's engineering research center, was tasked with making waves. He and his students built this huge contraption, 28 feet tall, 7 feet wide. Well, just this device itself weighs uh, 29,000 pounds. In one of the most landlocked areas of the country, where hurricanes are never a threat. Six, five, four, the goal is to find out what happens when extreme forces of nature collide with man-made flood protection and ultimately how to design stronger levees, not just in New Orleans, but all over the country. The world's largest wave overtopping simulator is moving massive amounts of water. The idea is if you have a storm that in an ocean or a lake that forms, you have a levee, you have waves that, that are associated with that storm. They hit the levee, crash across the top, and accelerate down the backside. We're simulating the depth and velocity across the crest of that levee with this device. Through a huge pipeline drawing from the nearby Horse Tooth Reservoir, they fill up the tank with 1,200 cubic feet of water. Over and over again, a computer controlled gate releases different amounts, simulating waves larger than the ones that topped the levees in New Orleans during Katrina. Even the smallest waves that we have have velocities upwards of 20, 22 feet per second, which would sweep a person off their feet immediately. For this research, a year in the making, it's not the strength of people they're worried about, it's the strength of what's covering our levees. In the flume, on the receiving end of all that water, they're putting two species of grass native to South Louisiana to the test. Dr. Stephen Hughes is with the Corps of Engineers Vicksburg office. These are uh, planter boxes in essence that represent the New Orleans levees. He oversaw the Corps' part of the operation as it put together more than a dozen trays with the same materials they used to build levees, then shipped those trays to Fort Collins. The testing involves Bermuda grass by itself, also the longer, stringier Bahia grass by itself, as well as both species of grass armored with different types of turf reinforcement mats. These are like a, a, a porous fabric or something that, that goes about an inch or so underneath the grass. And so the grass roots grow through the mat and, and then grow into the soil and when there's big, a lot of water flow on it, it, it helps prevent the, uh, the grass from getting pulled out or, or getting broken off. After each hour-long round of testing, Dr. Thornton gets a close-up look at how the different armoring methods hold up under the force of water. If you look carefully, you can see areas that might be little divots, and so I go in and poke and feel, is that soil completely saturated? If it is, I know that water's been sitting in there versus just flowing over. I have a couple of spots that have a few small areas of, of very localized erosion, but certainly nothing uh, to be alarmed about. Colorado State University has a lot of experience to back up its research. It's been doing hydraulics testing in connection with erosion control for 15 years. But this is something that's never been done on this scale anywhere in the world. We just don't know. There's been a few te tests done in, in the Netherlands that the Dutch have done, Dr. Vandermeer and his group, of taking their simulated actual levees and testing in situ conditions. 
So there's a small database for those types of geometries, those types of soils, those types of vegetations. We really know nothing about what's happening over here. I've done experiments with water for most of my career, and this is something far beyond anything I've seen before. At the end of the day, the armoring research being done in the mountains of Colorado should speak volumes for flood protection 1,300 miles away. We're going to undertake this research to find out what our best applications are and, and put those in the system where they need to be so that we've got a uniformly resilient system. And result in levees and flood walls, the Corps hopes can stand up to a storm even stronger than Katrina. Kim Holden, Fox 8 News. <laughs> we're back on, folks. If you'll start that video, then they'll see us, the proof that we're here. That's awesome to see Dr. Chris Thornton. He's a close personal friend of mine. He's to, I've toured that facility with him a number of times. Yeah. And I remember when he told me he was going to go to the Netherlands and see what they were doing for research, he talked about coming back to build that giant flume, specifically for levy testing. Oh, that's and cool. I've been blessed to see it in action with the water coming down from the Horse Tooth Reservoir, and it's awesome. So great work by Dr. Thornton at CSU. Yeah, that's really cool. I've been there, but I've never seen it in action mm -hmm. so it's wonderful yeah that's really neat all right great video so we had some other comments can you share the powerpoint slides i think we are oh you after the fact so good question we will share uh the youtube video for this and then we will have some pdfs available we probably won't share the entire powerpoint if you want that just arrange make arrangements with us and we'll set one up for you and do a presentation for whoever you want after the fact what's the other question there from the anonymous attendee anything you want to ask it says well, just, so yes. Is there any specific contact email website? Yes, yes. At the end of the presentation, you'll see our, our names and yeah. um, you know, our website and our name. Our names. My name's on Propex website. We have links to contact us, and it goes through our system, and we'll be able to reach absolutely. Out to you. And as the host of this, I'm 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 asking you to go to ASP Enterprises, Quick Supply Company, Bowman Construction Supply, Cascade Geo, whoever your local distributor is within our company, because this is what we do. We'll put you in touch with Propex. We'll bring them in, use Ben and the other engineers as the experts. Uh, we can help you with other aspects of vegetative solutions and some other any other things you would need even down to stormwater. So good question. Uh, spacing design of anchors. That's all. Donald, thanks for your question. That's all part of what we offer through yep. you. Uh, site specific. There's right. not one size fits all. We do exactly what they need for their job. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, just on a typical erosion control uh, project like this, so you see here in a levy, uh, roughly four foot by four foot spacing is about standard. We can change that. Um, it's it's really all over the board, but that's a, a standard to start from in case you want to have an idea of what that is today. As engineers, we got to make sure we do a uh, good design, but we get accused of sometimes over designing. Yeah. But we also want you to be good stewards of your resources because we want you to be successful. So you keep coming back. But in order to do that, they got to specify the right products. This isn't just a throw down a generic term. You need to specify the products that have the manufacturer support, right? So yes, yeah, it's got to say the yeah. name of the pro product on there if, if they want to have that engineering design fitted to their site. Yes, it does. But, you know, there's a lot of cases where they have public projects where they can't specify a name. You know, that's okay. We deal with that all yeah. the time uh, or an e or, an or equal or just even a generic one. And we we typically even we'll have line aside of that project and we can still you know track it down and, and compete with the other uh, competitors in the marketplace, um, you know, and provide our cost and, um, you know, the quantitative and qualitative benefit of us as a team in the support of the project. Seems like we're already handling the Q&A. We might not yeah, have time at the fine. end, so that's we'll see. Right. We're, good. we're doing we'll okay on time. 103 Central. I don't mind. General range of cost per square yard. This is something um, that we would rather answer on a project specific basis. Absolutely. The cost basis, it ranges so much from um, the size of the anchor, the density of the anchors and all that. So if, um, if yep. you have a project or something that you're considering, we'll, we could give you a cost at that point, but it's just it's just too much to contact your local answer. ASP and quick supply person, and they'll they'll help you with the general numbers for budgetary estimates. But then, as yep. as Ben said, we'll dial in specific for your project. Better keep rolling. Okay, we're gonna keep rolling. So this is what installation on the levee looks like. We've got the HBTRM on the levee. We've got some sod coming back there. As I mentioned earlier, you know you can. You can run equipment across this. It, it really helps out. The material is so strong that, um, you know, from a productivity productivity standpoint, uh, is you can run tracked equipment as long as you don't turn real hard on it. Or rubber tire equipment's even better. 
uh, cleated equipment, and we wouldn't recommend that. So we'll just keep rolling through these here. Gosh. Here's a uh, riverbank stabilization project here. This is located um, in Pennsylvania, actually. I'll try my best here. Bill, you want to try to pronounce this? Monongahela. Monongahela. Man, that's pretty good. Ah, you, must, you must have heard of it before. <laughs> I didn't even cheat. I didn't even prepare. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, yeah it caught dumb. me off guard. On the spot. All man. those years of high school announcing sports. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So um, on this Monongahela River lies a chemical facility storage tank farm here that has a barge onload offload dock over here on the river. And this is the pipe bridge that comes over into it. And the owner was getting concerned because... This little crest of the slope here was continuing to get closer and closer mm. to this fence. You know, and he, he was worried about, you know, he needed to do something to stabilize this. He was really confused because, you know, as you can see by these trees down here, you can see the river stays down there most of the yeah. time. You know, if it uh, was up higher, these trees would be drowned out and dead. Mm. Um, so, you know, it didn't understand why the slope was continuing to erode. Let's go back to that issue I talked about with saturation. Um, you see some other pictures here or it's starting to erode. And um, so they hired an engineer and the engineer reached out to us and asked us if we had any options for him. And we said, yes, of course we do. We've got armor max with these big anchors we sink into the ground and it allows the bank to stay stabilized. So they actually um, obtained a soil boring at this location and determined what the soils were here. There's a clay sand underlay by a sandy clay and they had various uh, soil properties here. If there's anyone who's geotechnical in nature on the mm -hmm. call here today, you'll notice what these are. Um, and what this showed was that the existing slope here, this number up here is 0 0.98. It, uh, that's the actual factor of safety of slope stability that is the existing condition. And let's go back to the basics, right? Yep. So anything with a factor of safety less than one is unstable. Yeah, that's right. And if it's above one, it, it's fine, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You catched me off guard. Yeah, you yeah, didn't yeah, tell yeah. me anything. I'm glad I remember this from college 100 years sorry, ago. Sorry. <laughs> um, you know, so, you know, we all, uh, depending upon what kind of design you're doing, it's a steel design or a slope design, there's different goal factors of safety associated with that. Um, and, uh, but anyhow, the existing factor of safety is 0 0.98. That's right around one. It rounds up to one. So yeah. what was happening was that after every precipitation event, the surface soils would get saturated and slough off. Yeah. And they just kept, you know, over time. It's classic. You see this in a lot of areas, not just uh, Pennsylvania. This happens a lot. Yes, it's, it's anywhere USA can happen. <laughs> and, um, you know, back to what the goal factors of safety for slope stability are is 1.5. Yeah. And what we did is we ran an analysis with our anchors and our mat. We found that our size two anchors uh, embedded nine feet on a four foot by two and a half foot grid. So we had to tighten up the standard spacing a little bit. Uh, we could get this factor of safety for long-term slope stability up to 1.55. So that's, that's awesome. above the 1.5 uh, goal. That's where engineering looks like yes. magic. Because for people that don't yeah. do the engineering and haven't taken the geotechnical courses, this is where the magic happened. Yeah, yeah. And, and these are all excerpts from the um, GeoStudio Slope W, which is a software that our engineers use. This, this, this is what our engineers in-house awesome. used. And so we were able to put this together along with another report that lists all our assumptions and um, inputs, outputs, and all that. And sent to their engineer and their geotechnical engineer and reviewed it, you know, mm -hmm. and said, hey, you know, this is what we, um, you, is your interpretation of these inputs and outputs, are they the same? And then, you know, we get to the point where we all come to a consensus, put some plans together. I love that kind of collaboration. Yeah, yeah. I got collaboration worked in. I knew yes. I was going to say it eventually. Teamwork <laughs> makes the dream work. There you go. Yes, it does. Uh, nothing better than teamwork. So um, here's some pictures of uh, slope restoration. Yes, what's happening here? We the bucket is beating itself up against a slope. That's not the best way to compact a slope. Uh, had this been a, a dam or a hydraulically critical embankment, we'd make sure that it was being compacted and bench lifts, yeah. you know, but uh, we, even though we're providing support, we can't always tell the contractor everything to do, but none, nonetheless, it, this was a compaction effort that went forward. Um, and so what they can do is they can roll out our material in a staging area to a pre-cut length. One worker can put it on a shoulder, carry it over and, and roll it down the slope. It's, it deploys that easy. And you see, we got all these stripes in the material. We don't have them there just because we think the stripes are cool. Looking. <laughs> you can see there's actual pins placed in those stripes. So what this helps the contractor do is understand a spacing requirement for pins and anchors, as well as overlap between panels. There's a three inch overlap is what we recommend. And that's what these little, um, we call these marker yarns and they mark the, the spacing. So they're not wasting too much material by having too large of an overlap. You take out the guesswork. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
just uh, that little gnat's bothering you. Yeah, so sorry. We they can't about see that it. Earlier. They yeah. can't see it. It's kind of like bees. People yeah, think you're crazy. Right. We're walking into a cobweb. What's no one else doing? can see He's, it. <laughs> Technical difficulties again. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, they're driving some pins and anchors here. You saw in the video they're using this uh, crazy device here to te pull tension on the anchors. Uh, we sell all those tools and all the materials that are needed to install them. Then what they'll do is they'll come back at the end and they'll clip all the extra tendons. Uh, they'll cut those out so you don't see that. And then I got a problem here. So I don't have a picture between this picture and this picture here. Mm. You see the mat. And then also we go to this straw blanket look. So what happened between these two pictures was contractor brought in topsoil. We talked about how we could vegetate with sod earlier in the previous case study. But you can bring in topsoil and spread topsoil. They just dump it on the top. And then they just kind of rake it down the slope. And it held onto that slope until yeah. the grass was yeah. established. Yeah, That's it, awesome. It holds on. Well, it holds onto the slope. Uh, we recommend about an inch to two inches usually of topsoil, just enough to cover up the mat. And then they place their seed mixture. Mm -hmm. Now, the seed mixture can be anything that um, would, would normally grow in that environment at that location at that time of year. So uh, adding these materials doesn't really change anything to seed recommendations or fertilizer recommendations. You, you want to make sure that's another thing, fertilizer. Yeah. Uh, you want to make sure that the soils are, if the soils are incapable of supporting vegetation, placing a mat on top of it is not going to change anything. Right. So we work with people as a distributor yep. a lot with yeah. uh, soil amendments, fertilizers, right. seed recommendations. So we can help with that. Yes. And ASP and all their companies, they yeah. have they have all sorts of uh, solutions. And all and of we, our people we, are uh, local experts. We collaborate with them on and all that kind of stuff all the time. Collaborate. Collaborate, teamwork. Um, we're, you know, like I said, fertilizer, seed mixtures, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and then uh, so what they did, you can see by the time of year here, it's, it's early spring. March 13th. I uh, hope it wasn't Friday the 13th. <laughs> but um, they place the soil, they place the seed, and then they roll out a straw blanket because otherwise the seed could be eaten off by birds or it could wash off before it would germinate. It seems like there's a lot of steps, but it goes really, really quickly. And this is three months later, another May wow. 13th, man. Uh, you see what the kind of vegetation we got wow. here, right? And remember, remember what I was talking about with the compaction effort. Now they, they, compacted the slope as best they could. We got a really good stand of vegetation here. We walk out on this uh, pier and we see over here, whoa, what's going on here? We got a little slough, right? What happened there? Well, well, upon closer examination, we find out that we have the straw blanket, but we do not have the green armor max here. Oh, so, so they didn't cover all the They didn't cover slope. for whatever reason. They stopped around about here. And I think it, it has to do with where this fence turned in or where uh, this pipe bridge turned in. It, it, Contractor stopped armoring at that location. Mm -hmm. they, they had enough straw blanket left over. They, they I'm kind of glad they did so you could see yeah. the comparison. Yeah, I, I hated it for the for all those parties involved, but it was great that it could see a side by side comparison. But it can't of, be fixed. Of a not not very well compacted slope. Yeah, you know, um, and that's why the slough because it wasn't compacted very right. well. It didn't have anything to hold it. But we see that this um, armored embankment with armor max is holding really and now you have a believer with the owner and the contractor they see first can first hand example that yeah. the armor max really works they need to go out there and fix that spot that's correct it that's happens very correct um okay let's 113 roll. you're doing good on time. Yeah, oh, 113 so, boy 13 coming up a lot i, I don't know, know. is I that know. good or bad good luck driving home Our number, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness hey, you're flying you're not sitting in seat number 13 are you i hope not row 13 i'm, check. I'm gonna change it if i am <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, that completes a portion of our Armor Max product and our HPTRMs. I'm going to talk to you about another product here called Scour Lock, which is what I call a derivative of these materials. It basically uses the same kind of geotextiles and the Armor Max material to form uh, a system that can be used to create a green wall. Uh, since we're here at this point where we're going to change subjects, I just want to write a reminder. You guys have been great with the questions. We really appreciate those. We've got about 15 minutes left. So what we're going to try to do here is get through this portion allow any time for any unanswered questions. So if you have any other questions or any ideas you'd like to type in, please feel free to do so at this time. I'm smiling because I, while you're looking at the Q&A, I went into the chat. Don't do uh -oh. it. You keep going. Uh -oh. But there are 30 some chats in here where people are saying it crashed, it crashed, it's back, it's back. So a oh, whole lot of people, sweet. they're encouraging us. So thanks for hanging in there. I'm proud of you guys. 79 yeah. participants, even after the crash. That's yeah, awesome. thank you very much for sticking with That's us on awesome. that technological disaster we experienced earlier. But anyway, okay, moving along, scour lock. What is scour lock? Scour lock is engineered bank stabilization. It's another way to stabilize some banks here. All right, this here is a rendering, an artist rendering, we like those, uh, of what these are. Scour lock is kind of like a gabion basket. I mentioned there were some gabion baskets earlier where we could put rocks inside these baskets. Well, scour lock, it's, it works like a gabion basket, but it allows you to put soil 
back into these baskets. So like take for instance, this um, embankment stabilization project probably had a little bit of a slough. Um, if we were to come back with a gabion basket, we would have to um, excavate this material, set it aside, uh, haul it off, bring a gabion back in here, uh, import a bunch of rock. Import with truck loads truck and loads try to get rock, it down into the area. And then carry it down here and then pretty much yeah. hand place. You got to hand place these rocks. Oh, you're kidding. You can't, you can't oh. dump these rocks into gabions so it'll collapse. Um, now gabions have their, you know, I got to care what we sell them. I'm just thinking that sounds like a lot of work. Yeah. I'm an engineer and so I've got soft skin. Gabians have their spot, their sweet spot too. Yeah, this we, is just another we still alternative. Provide those. Yes, yeah, yeah. Gabians have their purpose. All these other technologies, concrete, they have their um, their sweet spot as well. But this is just another okay. option for you to consider. Um, so this location here, we could excavate this material out, form a footing, set that soil aside, put that soil back into this basket here, uh, and it can be end dumped into it. And then we can supplement it with Armor Max or something else going up the slope. Uh, this is a great uh, product for any kind of toe protection or any kind of toe stabilization. And we got another video. I love my videos. Uh, this video, you might recognize someone in here. I apologize for that, but here we go. Scourlock is a robust shoreline defense system designed to resist extreme hydraulic stresses and protect shorelines while promoting vegetation. Its patented design features rigid cells armored with the superior erosion control protection of Pyramat high performance turf reinforcement mat and the separation capabilities of Geotex non-woven geotextile. Each cell assembly can be articulated to accommodate a variety of landscapes. We at Profex are very excited about this innovation that we've been bringing forth to the industry as of late. Traditional hard armor solutions require imported materials like rock and concrete, whereas the scour lock baskets there can be filled with in situ soils or soils that are on site, eliminating that need for transportation and transportation costs. So utilizing scour lock on your projects is gonna allow you to complete the project in a significant time savings, cost savings, as well as improve extended performance. Scourlock improves the function of traditional hard armoring solutions by incorporating the vegetated benefits of an engineered earth armoring solution. The unique design of the Pyramat HPTRM helps lock seeds in place to promote rapid root mass development, while Geotex provides unparalleled hydraulic flow and soil retention to support sediment control. Additionally, Pyramat is fastened to the rigid cells to form vegetating pockets that can be filled with vegetative media to further promote and sustain plant growth. The fill material within the pocket promotes vegetation because it's highly organic. It allows you to mix seed in with the mixture as well. So that once rains come or high flows in the stream that hydrate the actual media. Scourlock is more innovative because it provides all the benefits of a heavy armor, hard armor system, but it provides the ability for it to be vegetated and become a green wall and essentially disappear into the bank and look more natural. Scourlock is shipped pre-assembled and delivered on pallets for fast and easy installation. Each unit includes five cells and is 15 feet long. Units can be deployed by hand or using construction equipment. Cells can easily be connected to accommodate projects of any size. Once the unit is placed, the individual cells can be filled with in situ soils, eliminating the cost of importing fill material to the job site. The cells can also be filled with stone, gravel, or dredge in coastal applications. Overall, you can expect Scourlock's installation cost to be up to 50% less than alternative hard armoring solutions. Scourlock can also be combined with other Propex engineered earth solutions, such as ArmorMax and Pyramat to optimize design. Scourlock can be used to protect stream banks, lake and pond banks, canals, coastlines, or even to create artificial islands. It can also be installed above or below the waterline to fully armor the entire shoreline. In any aquatic application, Scourlock will help to enhance an environment's water quality by increasing pollutant and nutrient removal. Plus, by offering a vegetated solution, it'll reduce thermal pollution and protect aquatic life.
Okay. Like, they here can hear us now. All right, here we go. Back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Here we are. Just woke up from a nap. Do you have a good night? <laughs> All right, so uh, Skyrock here. Yes, it's a it's a welded wire basket. It comes pre-assembled, as you see here. This is what it would look like after it comes off of a pallet. There's uh, five cells all uh, joined together. Each cell is three feet long, so each uh, unit is 15 feet long, and it has a non-woven geotextile on the inside or geotex product that allows uh, to retain soil. And then on the face of it, we got our Armor Max product that's fastened to the face in a way that allows a, a pocket to be formed to place a you know, organic topsoil that can support vegetation uh, and eventually become vegetated. We've got a product uh, project over here in uh, Illinois that was a pipeline project. Uh, came through here and the recompacted soil over this pipeline right away started to slough in due time. You see all this white flakes here. It was snow. It was Ooh. very cold this day. I took this picture myself. Was Ed with you? With, with your colleague Ed Nelson. Ed Nelson. He, He's stunned. He did a great job there and uh, a little bit uh, up close view here. We got a slip surface here of about three to four feet. Something had to be done here because otherwise it was going to clog the stream. We got all, all sorts of, you know, stream pollution issues mm -hmm. and all that. Let's not get into all that. Not good. Um, so they went through and uh, removed that slough material, set it aside to let it dry out. They came in with a scour lock layer on the bottom here. And just some more pictures to show the scale of the project. Um, here's scour lock. You see it, it kind of serpents around here, uh, which is really cool. It, Scour Lock's got some give, um, just the way it's constructed itself, but it can be cut and modified to maintain any kind of alignment. You, you can match turn, that natural You can turn alignment. 90 degrees. That's I've awesome. even got a project uh, not in this slide deck where we actually went over a concrete and case sewer line. So we had to, wow. had to maintain the top level of Scour Lock, but we had to modify the bottom Good. and then also uh, put it in a curve as well. So lots of flexibility there. So we're placing soil here on this top layer. Uh, this is a shot of the bottom layer. I guess I got these slides backwards here. And what are we doing here? We're filling it with stone. I thought it talked about bad things about stone. <laughs> There's a place right? for everything. Yeah, but sometimes you need stone. You yeah. Know? yeah. Uh, one reason for utilizing stone here, at least in this bottom layer here, was to provide additional amount of uh, unit weight. The unit weight of stone is greater than the unit weight of soil. So right. stability, um, our stability calculations were showing that we need a little bit more of a uh, gravity wall down there. In addition, uh, on the stream banks, it's common at least you can place, if you don't fill it up with stone, you can place like a hat, like a foot layer. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it, it provides a drainage media to drain the hydrostatic pressure out of the slope behind it. Like a, a regular hard armor wall, you have to have a drainage system, yeah. you know, like a French drain, a yeah. pipe. Weeps. Well, yep. Skyrock is its own French drain. You, yeah. All you do is fill a portion of it with stone and it allows it to daylight that hydrostatic pressure to the surface. I love it. And it's important to know our parent company, Quick Supply, and other companies that we own are really friends with the stone industry. So yes. yeah, we're not anti-rock at all. We, yeah. we like to have the right solution in the right place. And you got another question. As you, as you get through scour lock, we'll get to that question towards the end. How about that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yep. We're coming right up to answer that question there, Mark. Mark answered, asked a very good question. Hello, Mark's Mark. a good friend of both of ours. You know so. Mark. Yep. Um, so as the... Uh, Scour lock was in place. They recompacted the slope and shaped it out real nice and neat. Great job. And then oh, they started wow. ro rolling, it, rolling out the armor max. So this is a picture taken from the crest of oh, the slope. So much better. Yep. Um, got our stripes that we're so proud of. <laughs> and wow. this contractor is running down. They had this little uh, platform slide here that runs down. They got it tethered to this bulldozer or this piece of equipment up Love here. It. And they basically drive anchors as they go down the slope. So they kind of scooted on down from anchor location to anchor location along that stripe That's neat. to be able to drive these anchors. There's a up close look of what that little sled looks Love like. It. It, it can pivot on the front here and it, it obtain any kind Mash of angle the for, the, for the worker. Yep. So there's a picture of that That's in action. Smart. Okay. And, you know, we talked about ways to vegetate this material. Uh, we've already covered sod. We've covered topsoil and seed. There's one more. Um, you can use hydro seed. Yes, you can. And different uh, hydro mulches and different uh, soil substitutes. This, pro this project utilized um, a product by Profile Products called Proganics. It was sold yeah. by ASP. And they came out there. They didn't want to transport a bunch of topsoil and it just wasn't economically feasible. So right. they brought out the Proganics, which is a biotic soil media. It contains all sorts of good things in it. And, uh, one of our attendees here, Mark, could elaborate on that. But um, mm -hmm. so they, they sprayed that first. Then they came back with another one of their products. It's a green product here. It's called Flexterra. Wow. Very yeah. popular. Yes, yes. It's a, it's a uh, bonded fiber matrix. It's got all sorts of um, uh, things in there to hold water and keep, keep things in place and keep the 
the programs from slipping hydraulically off, applied. hydraulically applied. Yep, exactly. And um, I don't know if there's anything else we want to add to that. Oh, that next picture tells a story. Yeah, there you go. So here we got a shot of the HPTRM with the programs and the uh, Flex Terra. So what one thing that's really important to note here is that you know with ASP and all their companies are they can provide a variety of solutions and they can combine you know products from other manufacturers together to, to bring the best value to the best. Yeah, our tagline is your trusted site solution specialist. And the trusted part is all the relationships we have. Uh, Mark's one of those. And we're going to get into uh, how to reach out to all of us guys. So it's it's 125 Central. So we have five minutes left. Mm -hmm. So we'll get into the q and I think before we do that. Yeah, we got to uh, go. You got something, something over there you want to. Yeah. All right. Let's see if we're ready. Yeah, okay, we're live on the mic. So let me see. Right. Is it mine on straight? Okay, we'll turn that on. Got the batteries working. Right, right, oh, you with the psychedelic version. Yeah, go ahead. Right, man. So, there we go. Well, happy holidays right. to everybody. Happy holidays. Yeah. yeah so, thank God you didn't get to have to look at these strobes <laughs> in the whole presentation. This but. is. I made this uh, sweater vest myself. I used to announce high school sports, and I used to wear this in the press box to get all the kids laughing for all the sports I would announce. So, uh, yeah, I made it sixty pounds ago. Cool. <laughs> Just fine. Yeah, thanks, thanks. So we do have just a couple minutes left, and one of the things I was going to ask you is uh, elevator speech, el an opportunity to say what are some things that set Propex apart from other manufacturers, or mm -hmm. just some things that yeah. have you feel good about working for Propex. Yeah, uh, Pro what sets us apart is the people. We've got a great team of people um, loaded with with a lot of talent and a lot of people that are out there willing to help uh, help you with your projects and become an extension of your resources. Uh, you know, to be part of your team. And, you know, so the best part about Propex is our team. You know, we can we can provide solutions and be cost competitive and all that. But one thing that we do is we we put a lot of effort into not only our products, because our products are better than the rest, of course, <laughs> uh, but our people are, are much better than the rest. And um, you know, so feel free to, you know, contact us and, you know, for any kind of uh, project you might have, if you're looking for solutions in a no pressure environment where we're going to, you know, work with you side by side. Well, Ben, thank you for that. And I agree. And I know uh, we went out to dinner with you and Todd last night with quite a few of our ASP folks here in the St. Louis Fenton office. Uh, had a blast. It's been fun getting to know you guys better. Uh, I will say in this industry, it's been really nice for me over the last couple of weeks to start to see people again. I know this webinar is virtual for you folks, but we still have 75 participants on here. That's wonderful. If you get an opportunity to reach out to us at ASP Quick Supply, Bowman or Cascade or directly to Propex, you let us know if you're comfortable with meeting in person. And if you're not, we can do this. We can set up a virtual meeting with you and your company. Uh, we can have project specific meetings to discuss what might work for your project, give you an opportunity to tell us what your challenges challenges are. Uh, as engineers, we love solving problems. We love mm -hmm. helping people. Yeah. That's just what we do. Yeah, we can we can host small uh, office, single office webinars. I do do that several times a week. We can have lunch brought in if you'd like or, yeah. or, or meet in person as well. That's and I'm going to put a plug in for International Erosion Control Association. Two weeks ago, I presented live in Denver for the IECA Mountain States chapter. And I got to see Todd there. Okay. And so Propex travels to some of those as well. Um, some in, some regions are having a hard time with in-person meetings. So we'll continue to do virtual. We modify, adapt, and overcome. That's just what we do. And if we can be in person, we will be in person. We're that's already scheduled and booked for February of 2022 in Minnesota. So Minneapolis, St. Paul, be ready. We're coming. IECA will be there. And then in 2023, IECA's uh, annual conference will be in Kansas City. And you're going to see a huge ASP and quick supply presence there as well. So we're at 128. We're getting close. Thank you, Ben, for, I mean, seriously, high All five. All thanks to you. You were, you were handpicked. All um, thanks to the audience for sticking with us through our uh, technical difficulties and for letting <laughs> us take up there. I'm proud of you who hung in there. We will have, do a, uh, a survey that will go out to every attendee. that will give you a chance to ask questions that you didn't ask today or you didn't hear asked and answered. We'll provide written answers to all of those. And thank you, Mark, for your question. And Barry and Leon, we'll talk to you about pricing for project-specific solutions. But welcome back to Tech Talks. A huge shout out to Madeline Drury, our marketing specialist. She's downstairs. She helped set all this up and to Don Tiemann, our vice president. So thanks. Join us again in January. We're going to have another Tech Talks presentation then. Stay tuned to our newsletter and follow us on LinkedIn. And we're going to put, we're going to put this recording out on YouTube so people can get to it later. And we'll yeah. share that link with you. Wonderful. Excellent. All right. Thanks, everybody. With that, goodbye and happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank